This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. We begin in Massachusetts, where the descendant of two enslaved people who were captured in mid-19th century photographs has sued Harvard University, accusing the university of unfairly profiting from their images. Tamara Lanier of Connecticut argues in a lawsuit filed this month that she and other descendants of Renty and Delia, two people held in bondage 169 years ago, should hold the rights to their photographs, not Harvard. Renty and Delia were forced to pose for the photographs in 1850 by a well-known Harvard professor, Louis Agassiz, uh, and uh, he commissioned the images to support his theory of poly, uh, poly polygenism, which purports that human races have different origins and that Africans <coughs> and African Americans were inferior to whites. The theory was used to justify the ongoing enslavement of black people prior to the Civil War, as well as segregation. The images of Renty and Delia were used in a recent Harvard conference titled Universities and Slavery Bound by History. This comes after administrators at Harvard and other elite universities have admitted they were founded largely through the labor of enslaved African people and profits generated by the slave trade. Well, for more, we're joined by two guests. Tamara Lanier is the plaintiff in the lawsuit against Harvard University, the great great-great-granddaughter of Renty, the enslaved man whose image was captured in the mid-19th century daguerreotype owned by Harvard. Also with us, famed civil rights lawyer Benjamin Crump, representing Tamara Lanier in the lawsuit against Harvard University over the images of her <coughs> ancestors. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Tamara, let's begin with you. Explain how you discovered that Harvard had these photographs of your relatives, of your ancestors. It's quite an amazing story um, that started with a request by my mother um, that I document our lineage, our genealogy. And um, at her passing, I set out to do exactly that. And um, that was in 2010, where the Internet wasn't as—the uh, information wasn't as readily available as today. And um, I happened to be out walking for lunch one afternoon, and I stopped into a small ice cream shop, and I was speaking with the owner about my dilemma, and he offered to help. And it was actually him, Richard Morrison of Norwich, who found the images on the Internet. Found the images. And how did you know <coughs> that Renty um, was your great-great-great-grandfather? Um, as a child, my mom often talked about her enslaved ancestors, particularly um, the man in the image who she fondly referred to as Papa Renti. And um, she also talked about the fact, uh, you know, of our lineage, uh, how we, how our family was broken apart by slavery. She remembered some of the family names. And so, when I met with Rich that afternoon, I gave him the names and the information that my mom had shared with me. And um, I didn't return to the ice cream shop uh, for a while thereafter, but when I did return, he said he had found amazing information on the Internet, and particularly a picture of my grandfather. And uh, the, 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 the images, uh, the information that Rich sent me included a narrative about who Louis Agassiz was, uh, but he sent me an email with a number of links. And I remember reading the information about Louis Agassiz and being overwhelmed um, and shocked by it. Uh, and then when I opened the link to the picture of Renty, um, it was a moment for me, because I knew immediately that this was the man that I had heard so much about throughout my childhood. And uh, Benjamin Crump, uh, could you talk about uh, what you know of how uh, Harvard acquired or, uh, or utilized these photographs and why uh, your lawsuit argues that uh, they never legally owned the images that they're profiting from? Certainly. Uh, it was the director, Steve McQueen, who told the story of Solomon Northrup in his Oscar-winning movie, Twelve Years a Slave. Well, Renty is 169 years a slave, and the basic questions that our lawsuit asks is, one, how long will Harvard continue to condone slavery? And two, when will Harvard University finally free Renty? 
Harvard University's professor, Louis Agassiz, was a racist. He, while Abraham Lincoln was talking about Emancipation Proclamation, he was going around the country professing that he could prove scientifically that black people were hard, uh, inferior to white people. He was an equal opportunity uh, bigot because he also fought to keep Jews and people from Ireland out of Harvard University. But in particular, he uh, was focused on black people proving that they were inferior. And so he wrote all these horrible things about black people to justify the continued enslavement of black people. Uh, and he sought to ha obtain ocular proof. Uh, and that's why he went down to South Carolina, because he was looking for uh, pure African, because after the ban on uh, transporting slaves and importing slaves into America in 1807, many of the slave masters had sexually assaulted and raped so many black women that there were very few uh, pure Africans, as Louis Agassiz uh, had noted. So he went to Charleston, South Carolina, uh, and uh, started looking there. But he found in Columbia, South Carolina, at Benjamin Franklin Taylor's plantation, Renty and his daughter Delia, and he uh, they were referred to as the Black African. And I remember Tamara asking her mother, "Well, why do they call them the Black African? We're all from Africa." She. Uh, did not know at that time about Louis Agassiz and that he was referred to as the black African because everybody knew that he was a pure African. And this is what Louis Agassiz had been looking for to support his racist beliefs. And, the, and in terms of how Harvard uh, Harvard only discovered these photographs, right? That they were stored in in a in a file cabinet in one of it, one of its museums back about uh, forty years ago. Could you talk about how they've used them since? Yes, sir. Harvard has uh, used the pictures. They've licensed them. Uh, these daguerreotypes are very very valuable. They are the earliest known photographs of American slaves and some of the earliest known photographs in America using this daguerreotype. Uh, and so Harvard had licensed them to be used in films. They were seen, uh, apparently, in the movie Roots, and they've been used in several books. They are located in the Peabody Museum that charges uh, rep reproduction fees and such. But really, it is priceless to to Mara Lanier and her family, because they're the lineal descendants. And when Abraham Lincoln and the United States government freed uh, black people in America, we didn't have any land. We didn't have 40 acres and a mule. We at least believe when we were free, we had the right and ownership to our person. And incumbent in that was our image. But Harvard is telling Miss Lanier and her family, no, no, Renty still belongs to us. He's still our property. And so this lawsuit just isn't about Tamara and the lineal descendants of Renty. That really, it really is about the lineal descendants of all African slaves in America, because slavery was meant to make sure that we had no familiar uh, pedigree that we could not trace our lineage. That's why they would break up the male and the female after they procreated, and they would take the children from their parents, because they did not want us to have a concept of family. They wanted us to think of ourselves only as property. And that's why it's so miraculous what Miss Lanier has done and being able to prove the lineage descendants, see, of her family because many of us black people in America, we cannot do that because the primary foundation of slavery was to make sure we couldn't do that when they sold us off and changed our last names to whoever the plantation owner was.
In 2016, Harvard University installed a plaque to commemorate four enslaved people who lived and worked at Wadsworth House, the one-time home of Harvard presidents. In an article for the Harvard Crimson, then Harvard President Drew Faust wrote, quote, "...slavery is an aspect of Harvard's past that has rarely been acknowledged or invoked, but Harvard was directly complicit in America's system of racial bondage from the college's early, earliest days," unquote. This is Harvard. Uh, Harvard University former President Faust speaking at the unveiling of the plaque. Today we will unveil a plaque that will document the presence of four enslaved individuals in the households of two Harvard presidents who lived in Wadsworth House. Titus, Venus, Bilha, and Juba lived there too. The plaque is intended to remember them and honor them and to remind us that slavery was not an abstraction, but a cruelty inflicted on particular humans. The past never dies or disappears. It continues to shape us in ways we should not try to erase or ignore. We must never forget. So that's past Harvard University President Drew Faust speaking at the unveiling of this plaque. Tamara Lanier, as you hear her speak, your thoughts. Well, interestingly enough, I received notice of that meeting from someone on social media, and I wrote to her and asked if I could attend that event, and I was denied, um, or I was told no. Um, what what resonates with me in that statement is when she talks about the past will never die and it will continue to shape us in ways that we shouldn't ignore or forget. That's exactly what she did with Rinty and his legacy. At that time, she knew about Rinty. She knew about me. She knew the stories that I've shared with everyone else. And I specifically asked her, why is it that Harvard, the keeper of these images, is seemingly not interested when the entire world is amazed? Um, and that would have been a great opportunity to reference their legacy um, with slavery in Rinty. But every time they had the opportunity to do the right thing by Rinty, they chose not to. I wanted to ask you about that, because this lawsuit comes after numerous attempts by you to contact different parts of Harvard University to try to get some response. Yes. Uh, could you talk about that, who you w reached out to, and, oh and uh, what led you finally to say, I have to file a lawsuit? Virtually everyone. I sent emails. Um, I think, ultimately, Dr. Faust was the last person at Harvard I reached out to. At that time, I think there was the W.E.B. Du Bois Institute. Um, I spoke with Professor Charles. At that time, he was professor, not doctor. He may have been Dr. Charles Ogletree. I sent emails to Henry Gates. And what did uh, Charles Ogletree say? He was very supportive. He referred me to the Cambridge branch of the NAACP. I did travel to Cambridge and attended one of their meetings where this was discussed, uh, but not really much traction from, from that resource. Um, I wrote to history departments, history professors. Um, uh, again, as I explained in my email to Dr. Faust, I have sent emails almost to the point of ad nauseum and no response. I'm curious what the response of Henry Louis Gates was, since he has spent so much time dealing with heritage and lineage and ancestry. He didn't respond. He didn't respond mm -hmm. at all. Not at all. So, Benjamin Crump, you have called your lawsuit um, the most important lawsuit since Brown v. Board of Education. Talk about why. Certainly, especially as it relates to civil rights, um, Attorney Mike Koskoff and I have put forth this claim based on uh, well-established precedents of property law. Uh, we've argued replevin, conversion, unjust enrichment, and aiming something very novel to be pled in contemporary pleadings. We are. Uh, argued at the 13th Amendment of the United States of America, which gave blacks not only the right to be free, but also the right to own property and to enter into contracts. And so, when Renty was freed in 1865, incumbent in that was his right to own his own image. This is critical when you think about what Harvard is saying, that 
We own the rights, not your linear descendants. Black people didn't get any inheritance from uh, any of our family members because we were slaves. We couldn't own anything. And so this lawsuit will speak to many issues that America has never sought to grapple with. They have just assumed that uh, the descendants of Africans should not be in t uh, given anything for our contributions to this country. Uh, over 400 years of free labor, building this economy, uh, bearing the cross on our back to make sure that America was able to thrive in the world. And so this lawsuit will speak to that. And if we're successful, it will be the first time that descendants of African slaves are ever given any kind of compensation any way that the harm is being repaired from slavery. Uh, until Harvard condones, uh, condemns what Agassiz did, because they have never done that, uh, there will be a stain on their legacy as one of the world's leading educational institutions. Their alumni diplomas will have a taint on it. And there will always be that asterisk there, that they are continuing to condone slavery because your actions speak louder than your words. And so far, your actions to Tammy Lanier has been outrageous when you think about their dismissive nature to her. Harvard, you're better than this. And in terms of this long history of uh, the country failing to live up to uh, what was done uh, during slavery, this this uh, this calls to mind the Henrietta Lack uh, story with Johns Hopkins exactly. and them uh, benefiting from uh, her cells. Uh, it also comes at a time when there's a, at least a few, for the first time, presidential candidates actually raising the issue of reparations uh, for uh, descendants of slavery slaves here in the United States. I'm wondering if you could put it in that broader context of the reparations issue. Uh, certainly. Even though this is well-founded in property law, we would be naive to uh, assume people won't see this as a reparations lawsuit. Uh, however, we, are, we understand that courts don't want to create uh, laws. They leave that for the legislature. But Make no mistake about it, it is landmark in its scope because it will be the first time that descendants of African slaves in America have been compensated in any way, fashion, or form from an American institution. And remember, Harvard is the is readily believed to be the leading American educational institution with an endowment of $30 billion. Uh, these photographs have an invaluable meaning to Ms. Lanier, but also to many people who are descendants of slaves. And why should it be locked away at Harvard University? Why shouldn't these daguerreotypes, these photographs, be used to tour the country? and be able to talk about these issues of white supremacy that we thought we had overcome, but we know from Charlottesville, Virginia, in recent years that it has been in vogue again to uh, express that white supremacy may not be as bad as uh, we as society has uh, proved it to be by many people, and to have the President of the United States say that there were good people on both sides is even more alarming. It makes Rente's fight even more relevant. And the young people, students all around the country have been signing petitions and starting to have marches to free Rente. It really heartens me, and it reminds me of what I did in college with Nelson Mandela when we were talking about the need to have an abolishment of apartheid in South Africa. So we take great solace regardless of what happens in the court of law, because they don't always get it right. But we take great solace in knowing that we're on the right side of history, and Harvard is not on the right side of history. Finally, Tamara Lanier, we give you the last word. What do you want to see happen to these photographs? 
Well, I, I certainly want to consider all of the options. Um, the one thing that um, I have talked about with my attorneys and with my family is it's important for me that people know who Rinty is and also who, who, or who Rinty was and who Agassiz was. And I hope that there's a greater um, education or reteaching of history so that we can dispute the legacy that Agassiz has kind of stained my family with. His name is all over Harvard. His name is all over Harvard. His name is all over this country and parts of South Carolina and the world. And I think that that's also an interesting point to share. <clears throat> I'm not only getting support from people all over this country, I'm getting international support. And I heard from a young lady in Helsinki, Helsinki Finland, uh, the other day where she said the world is watching. And it's because she believes that the United States has never atoned for the sins of slavery. And she believes that this case will be that first opportunity. Well, I want to thank you, Tamara, Tamara Lanier, for joining us today. Uh, she is suing Harvard for the return of the images of her ancestors, her great-great-great-grandfather, Papa Renti, and his daughter, Delia. And thank you very much in Dallas, Ben Crump, famed civil rights attorney who is representing Tamara. We will follow this case. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, Solitary, unbroken by four decades in solitary confinement, the story of Albert Woodfox, held in solitary longer than any person in the United States, out after 43 years. Stay with us.